All right, welcome back. We're going to cover ergonomics. And, you know, the definition of ergonomics, the science and practice of designing jobs and workplaces to match the, the human body, essentially. We can sum that up as fitting the job to the worker and not fitting the, um, the worker to the job. And perfect example here, uh, you can see this is just a before and after picture. But uh, the old way of doing it, where he's having to lift that by hand, he's in an awkward position. Uh, you can see all sorts of trouble there. Uh, and then afterwards, using the cart, of course. It's all about, and you'll probably hear me say this several times throughout the this course, it's work smarter, not harder. And that's what ergonomics is all about. What's really neat about ergonomics is um, the employees themselves, you know, you, you folks do the job uh, day in and day out. And this is kind of your opportunity if you can come up with some sort of mechanism um, you can identify the problem areas at, at, at your job, um, find the solutions to those problems, and make sure that those solutions work. Uh, and there, there's a lot of, of really interesting uh, pictures here as, as we go through to kind of get you thinking on, on that, that track of um, what kind of solutions are out there for the type of work you may be doing. Of course, ergonomics has a ton of benefits. Not only does it prevent injuries, but it can improve the quality of work and improves the quality of life, and it's reducing fatigue and discomfort. Generally makes your job more pleasant, and so that's a win-win for everybody. Uh, we talk about injuries and risk factors of poor ergonomics, and uh, you'll hear this term, uh, work-related musculoskeletal disorders, um, the common types, and the symptoms of injuries that we're going to cover, and then the causes of, and prevention of those injuries. Um, and so again, some more acronyms, cumulative trauma disorders, repetitive strain, uh, overuse injuries, uh, soft tissue injuries, which occur gradually, uh, not all at once, but gradually. Okay, uh, so here we have uh, what the muscle, musculoskeletal disorders uh, are affecting, the muscles, the tendons, ligaments, joints, even the blood vessels, and then the nerves as well. So uh, carpal tunnel syndrome being probably one of the more common ones. And then of course your tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, uh, rotator cuff issues, lower back pain, uh, the carpet layers knee. We're gonna see a picture later on. Um, you've probably seen people lay carpet before and they use their knee pretty much as a battering ram. And you know, you, you might be able to get away with, with doing that for a, a few days or a few weeks, but if that's your job and you've been doing it for 20 plus years, uh, you're, you're much more likely to be at risk for, for hurting your knee, getting bursitis in your knee by doing that. So the causes of these musculoskeletal disorders, heavy, frequent, awkward lifting, uh, pushing, pulling, or carrying loads, working in awkward postures, and then hand intensive work. And then we talk about the, the risk factors. So that's the duration of the exposure. How long are you being exposed to, to poor ergonomics, uh, the frequency, so how often, the intensity, you know, how much are we talking about lifting something fairly light or something that's pretty heavy, that's going to make a difference, and all the combinations of those factors over time are going to uh, are going to be kind of a, a predictor of if you're going to have issues later on down the road. Uh, so it says there the duration. You usually need hours of exposure before risk factors become a concern. And then exposure uh, can be all at one time or cumulative over the day. Uh, so frequency is often a concern in any type of assembly tasks. And you see, uh, you know, the, the, the old videos of people on assembly lines just doing the same thing over and over, day in, day out, 10, 12 hours a day. Um, that's one of those, those things that's going to contribute to, uh, to ergonomic injuries. But again, any type of sorting task, loading or offloading of materials, um, even if you're doing inventory, product stocking, telemarketing, um, all of those things. And it doesn't even have to be labor intensive work. It's uh, people who work in offices, they, they also experience these ergonomic injuries. So it really does affect everybody. Talking about the intensity, of course, what's the weight of the item that we're lifting or carrying? Are we using the pinch grip? And we'll, we'll talk about pinch grip here in a little bit. Um, the vibration levels that, that, that they're being exposed to, and even there at the bottom, uh, forcefully typing on your keyboard, uh, apparently, can, uh, can contribute. 
So, it says their exposure to more than one risk factor at a time greatly increases the risk of injury. For example, whenever you're bending and twisting while you're lifting, you bend and twist at the same time. That's one of the, the, the big causes of, uh, of, of back pain and back injuries is the bend twist. And then the repetitive forceful use of hands with your wrists being bent. And we always encourage a straight wrist and not a bent wrist. And let's see. Some risk factors, again, heavy, frequent, or awkward lifting. And you can see our person here, those heavy uh, manhole covers. He's got a, a tool there, thankfully, that's going to help him. But at the same time, he's kind of in a bad posture. So there might be a better tool out there, a, a better procedure maybe to help protect that person. And keep in mind, this guy's probably doing this uh, pretty frequently. Uh, says they're lifting more than twice per minute. In this case here, the person lifting on the boxes. Okay. And again, it depends on how heavy those boxes are. It says there, uh, awkward lifting. If anytime you're lifting above the shoulders, or if you're going to be below the knees, or if you have to carry something stretched out at arm's length, uh, those again are risk factors. Luckily, there are alternatives out there. We saw the use of the carts, hand trucks, hoists, conveyors, um, forklifts, you know, whatever you can do to, to automate the job or motorize the job and, and take the person out of it. Um, those are always good alternatives. It's always a good idea to slide objects instead of lifting them, if you can get away with it. Um, store heavy items where you won't have to bend or reach to lift them. Uh, so the lighter stuff, you know, you might store on the floor, but the heavier things you might store at waist level, just so it's, it's nice and easy there for you. And then use ladders to get items down off of high shelves and not having to, to lift uh, above the shoulder. So here's uh, someone lifting on, on boxes day in, day out, probably. It looks like they got some kind of a cart there that will assist. And pretty handy stuff. And then... It says their mini pallet for hand truck. All right, so uh, they got their, their boxes here and allows the hand truck to slide under the stack of bins without having to restack them. So this is, again, work smart, not hard, right? Looking at awkward postures, all right? And so the neutral posture, that's the opposite of the awkward posture. And then we have an example there of what a neutral posture would look like uh, and then a seated neutral posture. So. Looks like the shoulders are relaxed, uh, relaxed, lower back supported, elbows to the sides, and then the wrists are kept straight and the feet are supported in some way. All right, so you see there, awkward postures happen when the work is too low, too high, or too far away. And also some stuff around the low work is when bending, kneeling, squatting, for extended periods of time. These are going to be hard on your back and your knees, especially the older you get, the more you're going to start feeling that. It's always good to reduce the amount of low work that you have to do. You can see here this person has used a stool. Um, in other cases, you can raise or tilt the work for better access. Uh, use tools with longer handles and then alternate between bending, kneeling, sitting, and squatting. All right, so here's a, a, a pretty simple and cheap mechanism that was uh, just used to raise and tilt the box so that this person can reach in. And uh, you know that that's what's great about these ergonomic fixes. They don't, it's not rocket science a lot, a lot of the time. Um, a lot of time it's, it's simple, cheap, it can be done in-house and uh, makes the work that much more comfortable and prevents injuries. And then here we've raised the work off of the floor. This person simply has a table now to, to work on so a lot more convenient for him and here's a meter reader he's got to pop these lids up and he's come up with a, a golf handle extension to reach in there pop those lids so he's not having to, to bend or kneel all the time awkward postures high work so uh, that's going to be hard on your shoulders your neck and your back you see the guy here and then uh, this is the before and after looks like he's used a tool with a longer handle on it to help uh, help him reach that work. So it's always good to use an elevated work platform, rolling stairs. We talked about the longer handles on tools, limit the overhead storage uh, to infrequently used items, okay? And then bring the work down and tilt it for easier access. Uh, some more examples. Here's a fixture lift for overhead installations. And uh, it looks like 
So this is a mechanism that, that's going to um, help this person out quite a bit where they don't have to use both hands and then try to climb up the ladder and then have their their hands up over their shoulders trying to do this job. Looks like they've taken a lot of the, the, the grunt work out of it. And then here's, looks like a before and after uh, where this person is reaching. And of course that posture is hard on the arms, the shoulders, and the back. And then they've made a, a tilt table in this case to help bring the work to that person. So we want to keep items within close reach, and it's always good to design uh, the, a lot of these distances for your, sh your shortest workers. You have to keep those people in mind as well. Um, keep in mind there's some really tall people out there as well. We wouldn't want to design something for the tallest guy. Um, it's always a good, good idea to, to look at the, think about the average height of a person, uh, but then keep your short, shorter workers in mind as well because they may have to do those jobs as well. Talking about hand intensive work and uh, pinch grip is about the worst thing that you can get into. Um, if you've ever had to, to move plywood panels around by hand, uh, that's that classic pinch grip and uh, that's that's a good way to, to really hurt your hands. Uh, but bent wrists, of course, uh, with, with power tools, um, that's another contributing factor for these ergonomic injuries. Any type of repetitive motions as well. And the good thing about the repetitive motions, I've, I've worked at plenty of places where someone will do a task for, say, 30 minutes or an hour, and then they will switch out with another worker. Um, that worker will take over, and that person who was there gets to go and do something else to give them a break. And that's a good way to avoid ergonomic injuries as well. All right, so we want to reduce the repetitive motions. It's always good to arrange the work to avoid unnecessary motions, so to try to streamline things. Um, let power tools and machinery do the work instead of you doing the work, like we said, work smart, not hard. Uh, spread repetitive work throughout the day and uh, take stretch pauses, those are always good. Um, I've worked at a, a couple of places where every morning when the, the shift came on, uh, they would start their day out by stretching. That comes from Japan and, uh, you know, over time, they, they figured, a lot of companies have figured out that if you stretch before you work, uh, you're, you're much less likely to have any type of muscle strains and things of that nature. So with that said, that doesn't necessarily have to be instituted as a rule, but just you as, as an employee, it's always a good idea just to stretch, you know, maybe, maybe when you get to work or, um, or uh, you know, the first part of your day, take a few minutes and stretch out. We talked about rotating with coworkers if possible. And it's always good to change hands or motions frequently so you're not stuck in one posture the whole time. And uh, using power tools, you see the before and the after, the, the manual socket versus the, uh, the motorized power version of that, making the work a lot easier. And again, this is that, uh, that pinch grip scenario. Um, it says there a power grip is five times stronger than a pinch grip. And you can kind of see why. You're using the whole hand instead of relying on your fingers here to, to pinch and do the job for you. Um, here's a picture that I pulled off of uh, eBay just now, actually, and uh, pretty pretty clever uh, invention that someone came up with, where if you're having to move panels all day long and uh, you, you want to avoid that pinch grip, they've come up with this uh, panel carrier that just clips on and then you're able to, you're avoiding that pinch grip, you're using your power grip now, the wrist is straight, and uh, he's got he's got his panel here at about shoulder shoulder height where, where it needs to be, where he can get the, the most uh, mechanical advantage. So pretty clever, clever stuff here. And hopefully when you start seeing these solutions, it start, starts getting you into that frame of mind of, well, what about the things at my job that, that, that I don't like that are ergonomically, that they could be better? Um, start thinking on those solutions and present them. And again, repetitive uh, hand tasks with the gripping, good example there. Uh, we talked about the pinch grip and how we want to avoid that at all costs. Uh, other factors, it says that your grip strength decreases when you bend your wrists or whenever you're picking up slippery items, you're wearing poorly fitted gloves, you're having to fight the gloves, and if you have cold hands because that's reducing the blood flow to your hands. So it's always good to grip with the whole hand and not just the fingertips. Um, break up the loads into smaller pieces if you can. Use carts and hand trucks instead of carrying. 
uh, it's always good to keep your tools in good working order. Uh, a a well-maintained tool will do the task quick and efficiently versus something, a tool that, that's, that hasn't been maintained and you're having to fight the tool a lot of times. Um, it's always good to use lighter tools or tool balancers if you can. Always try to use two hands. Always try to keep your wrist straight. Pretty common sense stuff there. Um, you always want to try to pick up objects from the bottom using the whole hand to avoid the pinch grip and then attach handles or use lift tools. Um, you know, I, I used to work at a distribution center as a safety manager and we had uh, some boxes that had the handles cut into them and some that didn't and we tried to uh, and made pretty good progress. We, we tried to, to make it to where we were buying uh, products that, that had the handles cut into them already uh, so that we didn't have people struggling to, to lift on a box that didn't have any, any handles on it. And let's see, build up handles on small tools to reduce the grip force. So, okay. And I assume they, I mean, that, that sounds to me like taking duct tape or something like that or some grip tape and trying to build up the handle uh, so that you, you can get a grip that, that fits you and that works with you. So avoid holding onto objects for long periods. Use clamps to hold on to the work for you. And then again, using the carts and put down a tool when you're not actually using it. Now, here's a, another good example. Uh, it looks like they've kind of made a, a mechanism here that's going to help hold this in place where this guy's not having to hold this himself and, and struggle day in and day out. He's got a mechanism that's going to keep that steady for him and help him do the work. And I bet at the end of the day, he doesn't feel nearly as tired and worn out. So that's good. It's talking here about using clamps and vices to, to hold materials steady while you can uh, while you work on them. And then looks like here, the change pinching to gripping. And then uh, this person here added on a handle. Okay. To, to the, okay, so I see what he's doing now. All right. And then bent wrists, as we've already talked about. It's always good to try to, uh, to buy tools uh, that have, that are going to get you away from the scenario here and kind of into this straight wrist scenario. And it's always good to try to reorient the work. You can see how this person is forced into a, a bent wrist position here, um, whereas the straight wrist here using this tool. All right. All right. So of course, as we as we said earlier, risk of injury goes up as you combine the risk factors. So the repetition plus the gripping and the pinching plus the bent wrist. That's uh, that's going to put you into a, a dangerous situation where you could be injured. Intensive keying, I, I've never personally had that problem, but I, I guess that's a, that's an issue for, for your office workers. Uh, so it says there to spread the keyboard work throughout the day, take stretch pauses, improve your posture, move around as much as possible, and then using your uh, quick key commands. Vibration, of course, is another issue. Uh, especially for you folks who have worked with jackhammers before. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of time before you start feeling, uh, feeling the vibration and the effects of that as you go throughout your day. Um, and you can see some other tools here like your angle grinders. Um, those can, they can also be a source of vibration. And the guy here changing out the tire, uh, changing the, the uh, taking on and off the, the bolts, the lug nuts. Um, it's always good to try to use low vibration tools if they're available. Uh, keep your tools maintained so that the, uh, again, the, the tool will do the work for you and do it quickly and efficiently. And they do make uh, anti-vibration gloves and they make anti-vibration tool tape or tool wraps that'll help uh, absorb the vibration. And as we said, try to keep your hands warm uh, to keep the blood flow going to your hands. Some more risk factors would be repeated impacts, and you can see the guy here who's having to use the palm of his hand to put the hubcap back in place. Uh, if he does that too many times throughout the day, he's probably going to feel the effects of that. And here we have our carpet layer. He's using his knee as a battering ram all the time. Uh, that could be an issue. So use tools instead of your hand or your knee. And so here this guy has gone to a soft mallet to tap the, uh, the hubcap into place. And then this guy here, he's getting away from using his knee. He's got uh, a mechanism here now that's going to help him out and do 
the work for him that his knee was doing previously. So, anyway, getting close to the end here, what you can do is to recognize and report symptoms um, and get involved in ergonomics. If there's any job task out there that you're doing and you're thinking to yourself, there, there's got to be a better way to do this, you know, start thinking and come up with some solutions and present them. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can, we can institute those and, and everybody wins. So keep in mind some symptoms. We talked about recognizing the symptoms. Any type of discomfort, pain, numbness, tingling, burning, swelling, uh, skin, uh, the change in skin color, um, or tightness or loss of flexibility. These are all signs that, uh, that ergonomic injuries are in progress. So it, you always want to report symptoms if the pain is persistent, severe, or if it's worsening, if there's any radiating pain. And uh, your symptoms, they include numbness and tingling, and if symptoms keep you from sleeping at night. So it's important to report the symptoms because minor injuries can be uh, uh, chronic injuries if, if they're not taken care of quickly. Um, and of course, if they're not taken care of in time, then that can lead to further disability, maybe even requiring surgery. Early treatment is always going to be more success, uh, successful. So again, get involved, look at the jobs that you're doing, come up with solutions and, uh, you know, see if we can't fix some, some things out there. Uh, take responsibility for changing the way you do your job and help to make sure uh, those efforts are successful. So just because you, you come up with one solution and it doesn't work out, doesn't mean that you just stop. You know, there, there may be four or five or 500 other solutions that we just haven't looked at yet. So keep trying. All right, so the five key points to remember, ergonomics can help you on your job. Uh, and these ergonomic injuries can happen in jobs where the risk factors are present and risk factors can be reduced um, and the ergonomic injuries can be prevented. Report symptoms is er uh, early is very important and you can help your company put ergonomic changes into place. And uh, so that's it for ergonomics. Thanks.